Hello and welcome back to the West Coast on Farming Simulator 2017. You join us here in uh, field 14, just freshly been ploughed. And uh, you might notice we're in a class. Very nice tractor indeed. We have only leased this for a day. It's a class Axion 920. Very, very nice tractor. It is a mod. Um, but I do, I do love this tractor. It's one of my favourite tractors, in fact. It's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Plenty of power. Just generally, a good wee tractor. Although it's not really that wee. Um, we did have a worker help us with this field. Um, well, a worker done the majority of it. To be honest, we actually <laughs> spent most of the morning uh, down at our newly purchased field four which is next to the potato storage and uh, we got that ploughed too which is always nice now if we just come back into the farm there we have had a very 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 busy morning and as you can see we've had the transit van out So I'll just park that class there just now and then jump into our John Deere. John Deere can now put the I can put the plow away. Like so. And I'll just lower that. We did also obviously hire the uh, the larger plough that's on the back of the class, and also the uh, the fancy front weight that we do have. And we'll just lower um, that one, lower this front weight, and leave it here. Uh, while I'm here, actually, I'll show you. We have some things. We own this trailer. We own this tractor. This is a little Massey Ferguson. I'm not sure what model it is because the uh, front loader attachment is uh, covering it there. But uh, it's a 2740 or 2740C. It's a, a tracked tractor. Very nice indeed. It's not actually that slow either. It's very nice. This is the Massey Ferguson trailer that goes along with it with uh, some pallets of things on the back. We do have the front loader on that as well with the bale spikes. Uh, we're just going to leave this for now. We're not going to worry about that right now. If we come over here, jump back into the class. Let's see if I can reverse this over here without bringing a shed down or anything like that. <coughs> and uh, do slower that. Uh, wrong one. Do need that lowered anyway. I just uh, unhook that. Hopefully that will just stay nice and balanced there. And I'll um, leave this here. It fell over. It would do, wouldn't it? It's just typical. So for now, the class can just uh, sit in the shed here. Like I said, we only have this until midnight. Just turn it off. Run over to our John Deere because we need to refuel it. This is going to get quite expensive. We have spent quite a bit of money, um, around uh, 50,000 at least. I'd say. I can't actually remember how much I started with, but um, we are down quite a bit of money. This is going to take some time. Do I need to be in it to refill it? Uh, it seems like it will refill anyway. And uh, yeah, so what we need to do is, <coughs> pardon me. We're going to need the John Deere, that's for sure. Um, 
So we are actually going to be working over here in field 10. This field <coughs> just here. We need to spray it, I think. I can't remember if I sprayed it. Field 10 has not been sprayed, so I need to spray it. Field 15 has been fertilized twice, field 14 hasn't, field 4 hasn't. We own field 7 and 8 as well, as well as a couple down here somewhere. And nothing around there. We 81, we own that one. And up and nothing around this farm. Up here we own field 30. And we also have this quite large uh, patch here. That's actually the cow pasture itself that we own. And obviously we own this big patch of grass here too. So, so it is a cloudy day unfortunately. Did our John Deere fill up? It did indeed. So there's still a bit of uh, judder. Uh, my computer does seem to be doing something in the background. This tractor is filthy. It's kind of uh, a nod to how much it has actually been used. Don't think there's a PTO to go on this. No. You'd think there would at least be hoses to run. But apparently not. And over to this sprayer. There is a PTO on that one. Now, as you can see, we're mostly empty on both of these. Uh, so, just refill them. Again, this is why I said it was going to be quite expensive. Will it let me? Apparently I cannot adjust the height of that front bowser, that's fine. I reverse back a little bit to get a better angle coming out of here. As you can see the cloud and fog is starting to settle in. Looks like it's going to be a terrible day in fact. I haven't checked the weather forecast but Da, da, da. G. Probably should have waited until I was actually in the field to do that. So yeah, here we are, back in beloved field 10. I do like this field actually, it's one of my favourite fields. Almost a nice rectangle shape. But I do have something I'd like to plant in here that relates back to those pallets. And we're going to plant poplars in this field. Field 4 is going to be potatoes. And uh, fields 7 and possibly 8. I might, I might do 8 as well. I've not ploughed those yet. But field 7 and 8 will be just a normal crop. As well as I think it's field 14. It will also be um, probably barley. Um, all three of them will more than likely be barley. Um, this field is only going to be poplars this one time. And just to add a bit of variety. Um, I've never done a poplar harvest. And it uh, be interesting to see how it goes. I th don't even know if I have enough seeds. Hopefully I do. I have five in total four on the trailer and then one in the cedar itself or the uh, tree planter again the tree planter is just leased for a day or so um, I would like to get this field done either today or tomorrow um, hopefully today but uh, it occurred to me that we're on day four already and so far we only have one field seeded which is actually kind of a concerning thought. So I'm going to have to really hurry up with uh, the field prep because I obviously need all of the uh, the fields ready. 
before spring, uh, before summer, should I say? Um, because I uh, would like to focus on animal husbandry during summer. I'd like to have both the pigs and sheep. That is the intention. Not in the same pasture, obviously, but um, that's that's the plan anyway. To have the two of them. Sheep will come first. The sheep will actually be coming very soon. Probably um, on the last day of spring, I will get the sheep. Um, there's also the other reason why I have the small tractor. And that is <coughs> there as a, a utility tractor. Um, it's quite large for a utility tractor, but it's a utility tractor for basically for the livestock. Um, front loader for cleaning and pallet forks for uh, loading up the likes of the wool. That is the, the plan anyway. Um, I did notice in my previous videos that the sound was uh, a bit low, so I'll turn it up slightly. Hopefully that's a good balance of uh, tractor and voice. Um, I will just have to fine tune it with my, you know, checking of the videos and things like that. So if it's wrong in this video, hopefully I'll be able to rectify it in the next one. <coughs> Not worried about missing little bits here and there. I don't want to miss too much of it though. that hedge should grow quite nicely now, given that I've just fertilised it. We're about roughly halfway through this field already. It's, um, it's not the biggest sprayer in the world, but it's certainly capable. We will probably upgrade this sprayer at some point to a self-propelled one. Um, that is uh, something I would like to do in the future. No rush to do it just now. Something I'll probably do it next year. Um, this um, map will run for uh, probably two in-game years at least and uh, then it will be changed to something else possibly another older style map I do still have Oakfield Farm as a uh, series running um, that's a it's a completely different type of series though, that's not necessarily a realistic series or anything like that. It's just uh, its own thing, whereas this one is following on from Goldcrest Valley. This one is the replacement for Goldcrest Valley. Hopefully it proves to be more popular than the standard game map. I certainly enjoy this map, I absolutely love this map. It's, it's just... Uh, it's it's one of my favourite maps, in fact. Um, I have a couple of save games that I don't record on, on this map. So I know the map reasonably well. I actually know where all of the golden nuggets are. And we may do an episode collecting the rest of them. Or we may just pick them up as we're going. But this field needs to be sprayed and cultivated. And we're going to use the class to cultivate this field. And we're going to cultivate straight over this um, path here. Which may be not completely ideal, but to be honest I'm not overly happy about there being a public footpath straight through the middle of my field. If it was around the edge I wouldn't mind, but right through the middle. So if it gets cultivated into my field then that's not my problem. That's... Uh, it would be the what, Woodlands Authority or something like that that would um, have something to say about that but maybe they should have thought about that before putting it right through the middle of a field I'm not sure if um, <coughs> the law in England is the same as Scotland but in Scotland it's uh, 
There is no law against walking through a field as long as you close gates behind you. Um, it's ill-advised to walk through a livestock field. Um, not something I'd do. Um, especially not a bull field. But it's certainly not illegal. As long as you don't do any damage or leave any gates open, it is perfectly legal. And uh, it is also, I believe, against the law to take your dog through a field with you. Especially at a livestock field. Um, even if your dog is well trained, you shouldn't bring it into a field. It's uh, somewhat irresponsible. It can scare the livestock and cause the farmer an unnecessary amount of stress. So even though I personally have a sheep dog as my pet, I still wouldn't take my dog through a field. Even though, to be honest, should probably run away from any livestock rather than anything else. You'd probably, she'd probably be the one that's being herded by a sheep rather than the other way around. But uh, yeah, we're almost finished this field already. So it's quite been quite quick. We're going to have to invest in a pressure washer. I can't remember if I own one or not, but I couldn't find one the last time I looked, so I think I need to buy one. They're only around the £5,000 mark, I think, so not exactly um, expensive. But this John Deere definitely could be doing with a wash. It's very filthy. It does have quite a number of hours on it now. Just uh, pushing our way through the hedge there. And what we'll do here is, if this reaches all the way across, which it does, let's go back into this corner, save us having to come all the way back up here. So yeah, hopefully you're enjoying this series. I am certainly enjoying making it. And I am actually quite a number of episodes ahead yet, uh, so far. Um, Currently, at the time of recording this episode, I haven't even released part one yet, and part one will still not be released even um, my uh, on the the day after I'm recording this. Um, in fact, the day that this is being released, the last episode of uh, Goldcrest Valley will be released today, and that will be released later on this afternoon. Um, Obviously this is quite a bit past the point that that happened, but that should have been released on, uh, I believe it's the, yes it's the 2nd today, <clears throat> so I'm recording this on the 2nd of March, that should be the last episode of Goldcrest Valley out on, on that date, that's the plan anyway. And uh, this episode I'm recording is actually part 4 I think difficult to keep up when they're not being uploaded yet. I uh, I messed up there. That's uh, not how you're supposed to drive through a hedge. You're not supposed to drive through a hedge at all, I'd imagine, but you know. The series is not going to be without flaws in the realism. That's just a given. <coughs> so we will head back to the farm. I do, I do apologize about apologize about clearing my throat more often. Um, I'm actually dealing with a cold just now, which is always a nice thing to have. So I'm not sure if this will actually fit in here. It just makes it under there. So turn that off and jump in the class. It's a class class actually in 900 apparently. Uh, well, I, I know I did just take it off, but I'd be as well putting that front weight back on. Not sure if I can right enough, but hopefully I can put it back on. Maybe if I nudge it a little bit. Is that going to work? Yeah, that might work there. 
I did. So we'll just drive down here. I'll just pick that up because it is kind of uh, irritating. As you can see, we've put 1.7 hours on this tractor too. And we'll just hook up to this. Not sure if it takes a PTO. No, it doesn't. We'll fold it for the sake of going across the road. And obviously lift. So it's not the biggest cultivator in the world, but hopefully it's big enough that it won't make this job last too long. Because there is other things we need to be getting on with. I may delegate this to a worker, in fact. I'll do some of it myself anyway. And again, 11 miles an hour is pretty reasonable. Not particularly unhappy with that, that's actually quite quick. Much quicker than ploughing anyway. A bigger cultivator wouldn't go amiss though. But yeah, it's uh, making a relatively short work of this indeed. I think cultivating gets done slightly differently. I'm not entirely sure how this gets done in reality. Not sure if it's a straight up and down the field type situation or or how it works. Obviously, I'd imagine it would be if, like along the same lengths as either with the furrows or against, like across them. But obviously um, the furrows are not exactly uh, in line with the way the field was ploughed. It's down to the graphic settings I have on my computer. So I'll just stripe the field initially. with not massive gaps between and then I'll work through a, a pacing system if I'll go back and run back down the first one there and then come up over that side of this one and work at something like that and obviously until we get to the end in which case it'll be a the back and forth up and down the field type situation. Well, it's, uh, it's quite a quick job this one as well actually. And back down this side. I am looking for this to be done quite neatly, I don't want any mist to be honest. It's not the end of the world if it does get mist, but I'd rather it didn't. I should really have delegated some work over to field 4, I need that planted as soon as possible. Um, I'll get it, I'll, I'll have it done tomorrow, that's what I'll do. I was just, uh, get this done. Um, this particular day is actually going to be split into two. Two separate parts. They will both be uploaded on the same day but I'd like to keep the episode length down slightly so the episodes will be roughly 30 minutes each. Um, I will 
continue working off camera between though um, so be another few minutes of this field and then at the end of this episode I will uh, finish this field and then in the next episode we will be doing something a little bit different uh, just sort of like a jump cut just between two separate episodes but they will both be uploaded on the same day so the uh, the next part will be uploaded on the day that this one is um, yeah this is actually a lot quicker than I thought it would be I was expecting this to be quite a tedious job something I either time lapse or um, just cut out all together probably will actually end up cutting out the majority of it to be honest but you will get to see the end of the field, so you see in the start of the field and the end of the field being cultivated and then uh, you'll see it being seeded as well although I think I might see if I can spray it again before I seed now that it's been uh, cultivated it does neaten the field up different ground texture not one we've seen in this series so it's quite nice to see that As you can see we are progressing quite quickly. We might get around a quarter of the field done before the end of this episode. Um, I do have a recording timer on my desk so I do know uh, how long this episode is so far. I'll just cut this bit a bit short here. And over this way and then back toward, towards the gate here and I'll just this is a slightly wider band but that's no problem with me I'll do a couple more runs and that will be the end of the episode so hopefully you are enjoying this series I'm certainly absolutely that this is this is actually my favourite series to record. Uh, I love recording this series. Um, I, the map is amazing. The equipment we've got is very nice. You know, I, I I'm just uh, it's just I hope it comes out in my videos that I enjoy making this this series. Um, I enjoy it sing considerably more than I did um, with Goldcrest Valley. And um, nothing against the May the like basic map of Goldcrest Valley, it's just uh, I much prefer this map hopefully you all agree with that, that this is a better map than Goldcrest Valley Goldcrest Valley is, as mentioned previously, is a good map it's just not to everyone's taste, it's a it's a common map if you will it's a map that everyone who has this game has and even people who haven't who, who don't have this game have seen that map a million times so um, this map is also quite popular um, on as a download and a, on YouTube but uh, hopefully having mine as a realistic series or a somewhat realistic series is helping make mine a little bit unique so yeah Hopefully you are enjoying this series. If you are enjoying this series, then leave this video a like. If you have anything you'd like to comment on, other than my terrible driving through a hedge, then leave me a comment. I will reply to as many of them as I can. And uh, if you like the videos that I feature on my channel, then don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends. And the more subscribers that, we, that I have, the better the content I will produce. Um, just simply because uh, it's always nice to have an audience <coughs> so thanks for watching and I will see you again uh, well, later on today actually when the next episode is released thanks for watching and I'll see you next time